against a soldier's servant. A drama of tolerance and understanding based on an episode in the greatest life ever lived. Our scene is the town of Capernaum on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. Within sight of the blue water stands a military camp, headquarters of the Roman occupiers. In the tent of the officer in command, a servant stands holding a tray of food. Please, sir, it's time for your noonday meal. What? Oh, Marcus, it's time to eat, sir. Put it down here, Marcus. It would be better if you'd stop to eat now, sir. So much to do. There's always so much to do. I know. But as you yourself used to say back in the campaigning days, strong, healthy body is a soldier's best friend. You should eat before the stew gets cold. Stew? Oh, Marcus, you never forget my favorite. Not even the highest-ranking general in our entire army has an aide as thoughtful and considerate as you are. Thank you, sir. And now, uh, let me give you some of this. Ah, that's good. Very good indeed. Yes, sir. Have you eaten yet, Marker? Please, sir. You're worried about what the other soldiers will say, hmm? Well, don't be. I'm in command here, and I can have anyone I please as my guest. And right now, you're my guest. It's a command. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, go on, go on. Don't think I'll wait for you. Not with a stool like this. Oh, no. How is it going, sir? How did occupations ever go? The Jewish people don't like to be kept in subjection any more than others. They continue to fight Roman rule. More incidents. You know, it's strange the way we military men talk. If only a few men are killed, we call it an incident. To those who are killed, I dare say, it's a little more important. Huh? After all, if these people don't recognize Roman rule, I... of course, of course. But eat. No business during eating time. In here. Let go of me. Take your hands off. In here. Oh. Don't hit him. He's a tough one, sir. What's the charge? Sabotage. We found him down at our well, dropping his leaves and herbs to make our water bitter. Oh, I see. Well, you may go. Leave the boy here with me. Don't you want my report, sir? We put him on trial. I'll call you in later if I need you. Now go. Uh, yes, sir. When he latches, will do him good. All right, boy. What do you have to say for yourself? Are you sorry? I'm sorry I was caught, that's all. You're brave, aren't you? Go on, kill me, I don't care. What's my life compared to the suffering of my people under the Romans? Stop talking, boy. You don't want to hear the truth, do you? You can't face the things you and your brutal Roman armies are doing. I don't blame you. Stop talking, boy. Not for my sake, but for yours. You may say something that will carry a heavier penalty than mere lashes. You can't threaten me. When you're young and life seems endless, you can be easy with it. But when you grow older, as Marcus and I are old, then life begins to mean more. Have some sense, boy. Control your tongue. Don't make me do anything I don't want to. Don't do me any favors. I'm guilty of what the soldier said. And after I've had my life, you know, I'll have even more reason to hate Romans. And kill them. And we'll kill plenty. I'm telling you now. I tried to advise you, boy. Why should you try to advise me? You're one of them. You're a conquering, murdering Roman. So don't try to tell me you're giving me good advice. You think I'll be so thankful you let me off that I'll go away and not bother you again. Well, you don't know me. You don't know us. Can't you understand that I'm trying to help you? You murder first and help afterwards. A good system. Do you make many friends that way, Roman? Well, I'm not one of them, and I don't like you. And to show you how much I don't... What you don't... Let's go, Let him go, Marcus. Look, boy. For what you just did, I should have you put to death. But what good would it do? There'd be another in your place. So, get out. But if you're brought in here again, I'll have no choice. Yeah. You're not even going to have me lashed? You'd feel more like a hero if I did, wouldn't you? Well, I won't give you that satisfaction. Get out. You're the strangest Roman I've ever seen. Can't understand. Hey. 
Marcus, what you saw here, you'll forget it. But he spit at you. Will you, will you make believe it never happened? Won't we? Yes, sir. After all, it's natural for him to resent our being here, and the young resent most strongly. It's a privilege of youth, I suppose. Besides, I... Yes, sir. Well, as I get older, the killing seems to hurt more. Maybe I shouldn't be a soldier any longer. Maybe I'm getting too old, too soft. Maybe I... Well, it's too late now for maybe... Uh, please, sir, just finish your meal. Me? No, I think you'd better take it out. I don't feel like eating anymore. That boy took my appetite away. Clear the table. Yes, sir. Oh, oh what's the matter, Martha? Sorry. It's nothing, sir. Oh, it must be a bad pain to make you gasp. Marcus, why don't you... Marcus! God! Lend a hand here! Marcus has fainted! And how is he now, guard? I've been bathing his head with cool water, sir. He seems better, but he hasn't spoken. Not a word. All right, you can leave us now. You don't want me to continue bathing his head? No, I'll do it. You, sir? Get out. Yes, sir. What's the army coming to? Marcus, can you hear me? It's your old friend, Barnum. Can you hear me? Sir... Is this a time to call me, sir? We're alone, Marcus, just two friends. And I don't mind telling you one friend is very much worried about the other. Uh, I'll be all right. When I saw that look of pain on your face, I knew it was something serious. I can remember when we were in battle years ago and you were struck by a stone axe, remember? Your head cut open, the blood, but no sign of pain from you. And there had been other times. So this is not to be laughed off lightly. You stay in bed. You rest. And who'll take care of you? I will worry about that. You have only to rest and get well, Marcus. And here's a report from province headquarters, sir. Oh, that... Lay it on the table. I'll get to it later. Sir? What is it? What is it? Don't waste my time. Sir, it may not be the duty of a common soldier to report these things, but while at province headquarters, I heard some talk. Soldiers carry gossip just like women. What is it? They said our unit's behind in reports, but things aren't being run here as they used to be. I've heard enough. You'll be lashed for repeating such talk. Sorry, sir. I was only trying to help. Of course, I... I lost my temper. But I'm worried, very much worried. About Marcus, sir? Yes, he isn't getting any better. He's getting worse day by day. I can see it in his face. It grows thinner, the color more gray, and his hands, they tremble so that I... Well, why should I be ashamed of it? Yes, I feed him like a baby. That's why all this reports and commands and orders, they get on my nerves. I can't stand them. And if headquarters doesn't like it, well, that will be all, God. I know how you feel, sir. Thank you. Sir, may I make a suggestion? Yes, of course. Nothing seems to be doing Marcus any good. I won't give up that easily with a dear friend like Marcus. I wasn't suggesting that, sir. Well, among the Jews there's a man, a teacher and a prophet. One they call the master. Oh, him. Yes, I've heard about him. Rumor has certainly endowed him with wonderful powers. Rumor? What do you mean by that, God? I take a great risk when I speak of it. I wouldn't mention it if it weren't the centurion's old friend who's died. If it's something to do with Marcus, out with it, and there'll be no penalties no matter what you say. Speak up, man. Well, well, sir, one day not long ago when I had leave, I, I went to hear the master speak, to watch him with the people, and... Speak, man, speak! You may not believe it, but I saw it. Saw what? I saw a lame man carried to him. 
When the master had finished speaking to him, the man left his crutches and walked away as well as you or I. You saw it? Yes, sir. It's hard to believe. It's even hard to believe when you see it. But it happened. You think the master could help Marcus? And anyone else? That's the only thing I'm sure of. He's beyond our help. I... I'll think about it. Sir, you don't have to worry, guard. No one will ever know that you went to listen to the master. Thank you, sir. I think I shall go and talk to Marcus now about what you said. You're looking better today, much better. Thank you, Barnett. I thank you even more because what you just said isn't true. Oh, come, come, of course it isn't true. Please, Barnett. You mustn't be so depressed. You see there on the opposite wall of the tent? My armor? Yes. Well, shine, too. You always did take good care of it. You worked too hard. I didn't mean that. But, but I raised myself like this. I can see into the shining metal, and it reflects my face. Every morning I look. Every morning my face grows worse. <laughs> you see, I know I'm not looking better. But I thank you for your encouragement just the same. Marcus, I you must understand. I do, I do. But I know I'll have to die before too much time has gone by. You won't die. It isn't that I mind dying so much. But dying here alone, except for you in a strange land. It's an empty and a terrifying feeling. You won't die. So many things that have passed through my mind these last days. I gave up my life to soldiering. And with it, I gave all the ties of home except a few memories. Rome with its green hills. A place where you're not a stranger. Where you're not feared and cursed by every passerby. The peace of being with your own people. But I must promise me one thing. You must go back. Don't spend the rest of your life away from home and familiar places. They're dying only in a fate as I'm dying. I told you, Marcus, you won't die. <sighs> How could you prevent it? With more bitter tasting potions? They haven't helped. Marcus, I've received word through, through certain channels about the prophet they call the master. I have spoken with someone who said he himself saw one of the miracles the man has done. What's that to do with me? If you could be brought to this master, there's no reason why he couldn't help you. Your desperation to help an old friend. You're forgetting many things. What do you mean? You'll go to this master and say, I sent you the occupying forces in Capernaum. I command you to cure my friend. Is that what you say? Well, I hadn't thought about that. Well, face, my friend. You'll see how impossible it is. Well, I, I wouldn't command him. I'd ask him. Ask him? Would that help? I understand. Don't you see? It's all part of being a stranger, an enemy here. I subjugated these people, catched them, beaten them, killed them. Now you go to one of them and ask a favor? We are Romans. We are conquerors. We have no friends. I know, I know. It's what I meant when I asked you to go home after I die. You served long enough in the army. Sometimes I think they keep count of the Romans who are buried here. Each time another one is put under the ground, they will say to themselves... One less enemy to contend with the work for the salute. Fear. Yes, it's true. 
We've conquered them, and now we're their prisoners. We've conquered them, and our lives are in danger. So any idea you may have had about getting help from them? Forget it, my friend. Forget it. I mean only that it wouldn't. 
make any difference. Donna, this morning John, one of the master's followers, stopped at my home. And we talked about the master. And of a thing he said only yesterday to his disciples. It is a thing worth hearing and remembering. The master said... By their fruit, ye shall know them. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. And what has this to do with my friend Marcus? You've come asking a favor, Barnard. Shall I look on you and your dying friend as Roman or as men? We need help. Yes. And as the master said, every tree is known by its own fruit. What is your fruit, Barnard? Is it good or evil? That's what I will have to tell the master when I go to him. Shall we have an accounting? I'm... I'm not all bad, Aaron. I know that well. When our synagogue was swept away in the tempest, you helped us rebuild it. Shall I forget that and say, the man's a Roman, and hate him? You remember that? I remember a great deal, Barnett. I remember not so long ago a boy was brought to your headquarters for tampering with your will. He wasn't lashed. He wasn't condemned, as he might have been for an incident I don't even want to mention. You... you know about that? Yes. Yes, I know. And don't think you lost any stature by being lenient with the boy. Yes. We know a great deal more than you give us credit for. And we remember it. All. I... I'm beginning to see. Well... Put these acts together. One by one, they begin to mount up. They are the fruit of your heart, Barney. And by the Master's own test, you have a good heart. Then you'll help me? I'll go to the Master. I'll plead with him to help you. You have my word. <laughs> And another thing, Master, it will be good if you can help this man, for he's done many acts of kindness to our people. And we are going with the Master who is on his way to help him now. Isn't that proof that he's heard enough of the man? Yes, Peter. It will be a kind act to perform, for it will save one man's life and open another's heart to things he doesn't know as yet. Are we close to the Roman camp? Down the road. But there, there, you can see the tents now. And I can see a man coming toward us. A Roman... To judge by his uniform. So it is. Why, that's, that's Barnett himself. Barnett! Barnett! Aaron! Aaron, I heard it. Word came to me that the master himself was coming to my place. You can see for yourself now. I can't allow him to do that. But isn't that what you wanted? At first, yes, but after I thought about it, I, I knew how wrong it was to ask him to come to me. A man like the master who knows no difference between peoples, who cares not if they be Roman, Jew, or Samaritan, who helps all men who are deserving of help. Such a man is too noble to enter my house. I can't ask him to do that. Master. Master, don't trouble yourself to come to my house. After all, I, I'm not worthy to have so good a Holy a man, enter on the by room. Barnett, the master is still listening. Master, I'm a man of authority. I have been all my life. I give commands and others carry them out. I tell them when to come and go, what to do and what not to do. A man of such authority doesn't deserve your presence. If you will only say the word, my servant will be healed. 
I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. You have your word, Barnabas. Come, we will go to see Margaret now. Is empty. What could it mean? I'm here, Barney. Marcus, you're polishing my armor. A man who was so sick only a short time ago. Don't ask me to explain. I only know. But I think I'm excused by this. So well that I couldn't lie in bed any longer. I had to get up. I began to polish the armor to have a look at my face. Look at me. You are well. I can see it. The master has cured you. Oh, Marcus, Marcus, how good it is to see you feeling so much better. Thank you, Barney. Do you have your answer now, Barney? Yes. I do. And he said he had not seen such faith. Even in Israel. Is faith and believing the sole property of one people? Faith and love and kindness are in each man's heart in individual proportion. Can we say because a man is a Roman, he cannot believe, he cannot do good, he cannot be loved and respected by his fellow men? A man's origin or the name people place on him doesn't determine whether he's good or bad. It is what he does. It is the fruit of his heart, even as the master said, that determines if he is to be deemed a friend or foe, good man or bad. By their fruit, you shall know them. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is 